there has been a consultation on some of these, for example, on the complete cut of a route like the original Route 13, but the problem is the outcomes of the consultations are ignored anyway. Um, but if there are frequency reductions, um, there's no consultation at all. And that can be compounded if there are several routes cut in this way at different times. Uh, for example, Gold's Green to Finchley Road via Charles Hill has seen an 8% reduction overall. Finchley Road to Park Road via Swiss Cottage has had an 18% reduction. Uh, and following on the points that have been made, isn't it right that if there are these sort of salami slicing of routes, there should be some consultation at some stage to make sure that people's views are considered, but more importantly, that those views are actually listened to rather than it being a, just an exercise? Can, can I actually explain this? If there is a popular bus service and there is more demand for bus service, there will be more buses being on that route. It's a basic supply and demand issue. If there are fewer passengers using a bus, and I think it's unreasonable for there to be fewer buses on that route. So when you say consultation, the suggestion given by Senator McPigeon is that even though there are fewer people using the bus, even though there is f need for fewer buses, we should continue to have more buses at a time when we've lost the operating grant, when our buses are subsidised £600 million a year uh, from other public transport users. Uh, and I think that's not realistic. So I've got to be honest with uh, Londoners in relation to you know, supply follows uh, demand. If there are a few people using those uh, bus routes, it's not surprising if uh, people decide to, uh, if TfL decides to have fewer buses on the route. The key thing, though, is when there's a change in routes uh, for there to be proper consultation, but also when there is a, a change in frequency for people to be informed of that so they can make alternative choices. And the real game changer for bus passenger users has, is going to be us improving the reliability of buses, really important. Uh, in relation to one of the reasons why people give for not using buses any uh, more. Uh, the unlimited bus hopper, uh, unlimited bus travel there now, makes it possible for you to get off bus one, get onto bus two, get onto bus three within the course of the hour. A good example being around this area where there are buses doing similar routes which people can quite easily use uh, as well. But the third point is to move buses to those parts of London where there is more demand for them. Uh, and so we will, be, we will be reconfiguring our buses to move them from those areas where there is less demand for that bus to those areas where there is greater demand. I don't apologise for that. Well, I mean, I don't want to push this because we've got little time, but if you look at Route 13, that was a disingenuous cut because the 82 bus was scrapped, but in fact it was the 13 bus that was scrapped and the 82 was renumbered 13. And there was a huge outcry, and there still is, because the service is so unreliable and uh, I get never-ending complaints about the, the, the change. Huge uh, opposition to that particular change locally, all ignored. And the point about fewer passengers using fewer buses uh, then results in a, in, a, in a vicious circle because reliability is not just about it turning up on time, it's also about frequency. And if we're serious about trying to get people out of cars and onto public transport, they've got to know that there's a public transport there for them to actually use. But, but that's one of the reasons why we've made sure that buses are, particularly post Oxford Street being pedestrianised, fewer buses now going on Oxford Street than previously was the case. Those buses will move to outer London. And where the buses will go to is where there's demand for those buses. That could be because of uh, 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 more, ha more, ha more housing, could be because there are more jobs in the area, or they could be because there are not other forms of good alternative public uh, transport. But bear in mind, the business of TfL is to make sure we provide a public transport system, but to make sure that we follow demand, it would be perverse for TfL not to want to provide buses in those areas where there's demand for buses, and that's what they're going to carry on doing.